Um, we have seen uh, uh, some progress in terms of uh, uh, the Qadarism. We have not seen so much Qadarism that, uh, that we had seen much earlier under the PF regime. I think that has been content, except that it has been alleged that it has just transformed into a smart Qadarism and mm. not that violent Qadarism that we, that we have been used to seeing. Is, is it a fact proven now? Because there's been that conversation uh, over the past few years where you know, people would say, no, Qadarism is still alive, but they're just doing it Hush, hushly. I, I, I think they're, 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 they're smart cadres. I would say they're very smart cadres now. Uh, they're still there in the bus stations. They're still there in the markets. But the, the way they're collecting revenue from the marketeers and mm. others, I think they're using smart means rather than the, the, uh, the, the force that, uh, that, 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 that we saw then. I, 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 I want to ask you this because just yesterday we, we heard from uh, Kulima Tower uh, bus uh, drivers that have decided to reduce... Uh, you know, bus fares just to uh, some, somewhat pay homage to the UPND government for allowing them to, tr to you know, work freely and cadder free in these bus stations. So that, that's, that's part of the smart cadderism that we're talking about. Yes, you have reduced to, to pay homage, but uh, that is an act of cadderism because if the fees were set by Ratsa, and you know to say, oh, these are the, the normal fees that have been set. We have, we have been hearing this issue of bus drivers, associations, and all that. These are the ones that are normally used, uh, even in the previous regime. These were the ones that were being used to transport cadres for a political party uh, to attend their meetings, their barrios, and all that. And so it is not strange to see that uh, um, even the cadres themselves, the, the, the association of bus drivers, they can... They, they can turn up to try and uh, make things appear to be so good, but when things are actually bad, because they are the ones who complain whenever there is a, 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 um, an increase in, 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 in bus fuels. They are the first ones who come out to complain against Ratsa for giving them a smaller increase. Okay? They, they do complain bitterly. And now what we are seeing is that they are trying to camouflage themselves and trying to, to do the PR to say, no, I think things are much better. Things are still not better in the stations. I think that those that would tell you on the ground, the actual bus drivers, not the, the association of leaders, the actual bus drivers who, who tell you that we still have challenges in the bus stations. Mm. Yeah. All right, so overall, what's, how would you rate their performance uh, over the past few years? I would still give them a five. I think the last time I came on this platform, I gave them a five. Mm. Um, I would still give them a five out of ten. Five out of ten because, um, first, I, I recognize that there are certain positives that have, that have happened. For instance, the, the employment of uh, uh, teachers, the employment of nurses and uh, other people in the health sector, that is a positive. We are not seeing so much of the fights that are going on. But the challenges which the Zambian people are facing are quite huge. They are quite huge to an extent that... Uh, it's difficult to believe that uh, uh, Zambians can survive the next uh, two years towards an election. I, I think everybody is complaining. Uh, they, they, uh, I think you could see even on social media that people are becoming uh, uh, more courageous to speak out. I just hope that we won't reach the stage where the, the Kenyans reached uh, at some point where they, we saw the Gen Z trying to demonstrate. But things are a bit hard. They are hard. Minimum is expensive. Fuel is expensive. Almost all essential goods are expensive. What that you, takes away the other five. So I would give them five. What, what, what do you think is the biggest challenge government is facing right now? The biggest challenge that government is facing, I think there are two. The first is to try and bring down the cost of living for the Zambian people. That is a, one of the biggest challenges that the, uh, the Zambian government is facing. The second biggest challenge that the Zambian government is facing is uh, pure about uh, uh, the, the, the fight against corruption. I think that the perception of the Zambian people against this administration is that uh, they are not committed to the fight against corruption. So there is a very negative narrative uh, that if it is not controlled, it will see the UPND out of power in 2026. Corruption is a very, very bigger thing amongst, our, uh, uh, amongst the Zambian people. It is the same reason that in, in the PF, under the PF, the Zambians were annoyed with the levels of scandals one after another. All the allegations that were coming up 
and they decided to uh, vote out the PF based on that and based on Qadarism. But for this administration, it is also based on corruption but also based on the cost of living. The cost of living is too high for an ordinary Zambian. Everything is expensive. So these are the two things that uh, they, they, they need to work on. But also, the, uh, I also realize that when you, you talk about the fight against corruption, sometimes we, 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 we say, okay, how do we measure the rate of corruption under this administration, especially that when politics come in, you find politicians that will be running with every other story alleging this is corruption, this is corruption. Mm. The fake report that comes out, people would say, no, we have lost 13.5 billion in 2024. And then you begin to wonder, where did we lose that money? Uh, so it's a government also that is not a, a explaining to the Zambian people. When you lo look at the FIC report, which is one of the reasons why the PF was moved out of power, because every year the FIC report was coming and the PF were getting so tainted. Uh, you also now had those scandals, the, 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 the scandals in the Ministry of Health, that involved honeybee, you know, and a number of things that, uh, that, that went wrong. Are we seeing these things different from this administration? Or are we seeing the president, for instance, taking corrective measures or even just trying to, to get much stronger to say, look, I'm not going to tolerate this. Or I'm going to do some reshuffles here and there just to make sure that people are not too comfortable. Because familiarity breeds a contempt. And what we are seeing with most of the, 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 the public officials is that they have developed this thing of familiarity. Like, um, uh, this is my personal to hold. The president will not move me. You can talk as much as you want. He will not move me. He will not move me. So familiarity breed concept. And the president needs to get worried because it is his, uh, it is his image that is getting bad out there. People don't believe now that the president is actually... Uh, 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 committed to the fight against corruption because of the, these perceptions that have been created. And nobody is also going out to explain when there is an issue of corruption allegation, what we expect of the government, for instance, an affected ministry, not just waiting for the chief government spokesperson or Tabo Kawana, no. You expect that the affected institution is going to come up and be able to explain without the media following them to say, what is, this, uh, what is this that we are hearing? We have scandals, for instance, look at uh, what was being talked about uh, uh, that uh, uh, the Minister of Defense had contracted this company and the company did not deliver the goods. The Minister of Defense was quiet. Even when the report came out and it was pointing to the Minister of, De of Defense that uh, equipment was not delivered when they had paid 5.3 million. It had to take Extra, extraordinary efforts to discover that, in fact, the equipment was delivered. Okay? The equipment was delivered. Now, why did they have to sit and watch the, these reports flying around to say that equipment was not delivered? It is because there is an efficiency in these government institutions, in the ministries and the, the departments. So it is up to the government, if they want to continue with this narrative where they just sit and say, let the Zambian complain, we are going to continue to govern, then they must wait for the Zambians, because Zambians always exercise their, uh, their, their, their freedom of expression through a ballot, in 20, and that might happen in 2026. Mr. Mwanza, I know that uh, the president has been very, very, uh, you know, strong on the fight against corruption, but his, his fight against corruption has, has hit a snag with recent events, obviously, uh, with happenings at the ACC, him dissolving the ACC board, uh, the, the, the DJ of the ACC re resigning. And he, he had some sort of strategy uh, coming into, into office. The perception is everything when it comes to uh, the fight against corruption. Have, has the UPND-led administration lost the, the kind of perception that they needed to continue on this charge of corruption fight? The perception has been lost. The public perception has been lost. But it is not completely lost. The UPND and President Haka and the HDMA can redeem themselves and get the public confidence back. He needs to do a few things. Uh, let us start with the Anti-Corruption Commission itself. The dissolution of the board, the resignation of the Director General, and now there is a, 
a, a vacuum at the Anti-Corruption Commission. There is nobody to give policy direction to the Anti-Corruption Commission. There is no substantive direction at the Anti-Corruption Commission. What should President Haka and HDMA do? He needs to reappoint, he needs to appoint people that will become uh, commissioners at the SEC to give police direction. He needs to, point, to appoint a credible director general at the Anti-Corruption Commission. But much more important, what is needed are reforms at the Anti-Corruption Commission. There is need to reform the Anti-Corruption Commission. There is need to reorganize the Anti-Corruption Commission in its current state. I don't think that the Anti-Corruption Commission would be capable of fighting corruption of today, yesterday, and tomorrow, as they always talk about. It is looking more like they are, they are, they are so much interested in fighting the corruption of yesterday and waiting to fight the corruption that happens today when this government is out of office. But that's a retrogressive way of the, in the fight against corruption. So yes, I agree with you that President Haga Inde Ichirema had shown extraordinary courage to say, I'm going to fight this corruption. But now this, this fight is losing, I mean, the, the entire fight, we're going backwards mm. because of certain actions that are happening and the, uh, the government is sitting on it. If you're investigating people, for, let us talk about this issue of investigating people. The SEC just came to tell us to say we're investigating ministers. The next moment, the same institution is on defense when it is challenged to say, can you explain which ministers you are investigating? I personally don't believe that when you begin to investigate people, you must go out and announce to say, I'm investigating this one, I'm investigating this one. But this is a sad trend that the SEC and other law enforcement agencies have created. We hear every day when they're investigating, especially the opposition political figures in the previous administration, They'll be mentioning their names. No, we are following up this one. No, we are investigating this one. They are not doing it quietly. Yet they, are now, they now want to claim to say we need to do it quietly when it comes to ministers. Even in this administration, the unfortunate aspect is this, Sati. Here is an allegation against the, soli against the solicitor general. This is just an allegation. You are investigating the solicitor general. You are saying we are investigating the solicitor general. You go out to publicize, and you are the one who are even running with the stories to publicize that you're investigating the Solicitor General. Forgetting that he's also a, a, a public official who deserves the, his rights to be respected because he's not yet guilty. You have announced, and yet you are failing to announce the ministers. You are saying we cannot announce, but the other person, you are freely announcing. So this is a selective way of trying to, uh, uh, to expose corruption by the Anti-Corruption Commission and expose those that are involved in wrongdoing. It is important that we fight corruption with all the transparency that is needed, the accountability that is needed, but we must fight it with a pure heart. It must not turn into a witch hunt where people, you just follow people because you want to bring them down. I think that is not a, a, okay. a good way of fighting corruption. Mr. Mwanza, you also touched on uh, the other side of the challenges that the government is currently facing, and which is the, the high cost of living. Uh, I want to throw it to you. Uh, we've seen in the past three years uh, how, uh, first of all, uh, President Hichilema gave a, a, a whole policy direction when he was you know, inaugurated into office saying, listen, you're going to pay the cost, the actual cost of things you, you have to pay. For. If it's fuel, you pay the actual cost. If it's millimil, you're going to pay the actual cost because we're in this, you know, when we have so much debt, we have to get debt restructuring out of the way. Uh, he gave those reasons. We, uh, you know, we can't afford to, uh, you know, put subsidies on some of these products for you to buy them at a cheaper rate. But all those reasons that were given to as to why we are here uh, today. Also, uh, they went as far as some ministers going uh, to talk to businesses directly, and uh, uh, some accused the ministers of trying to introduce price control, but the minister said no. Uh, we we'll go and ask, uh, you know, uh, uh, manufacturers of products like sugar and asking them why they're costing that much. Cooking oil, why is it costing that much? And we saw reductions a little later on uh, uh, in the weeks uh, after those, those conversations. Millimil, a commodity that has skyrocketed so, so high. We've seen government come in and uh, made their own brand of Millimil and, and other subsidiaries of companies. Uh, would you say that should be seen as a plus, as an effort to reduce the cost of living? So, uh, first I want to say that I understand the challenges that this administration is uh, facing, and I think that uh, we, we
we must appreciate those challenges. Uh, President Aga in the HDM has uh, come from a background where first he campaigned on a platform that he was going to reduce the cost of living. Mm -hmm. He promised to say he was going to reduce the uh, millimeter to, uh, I think that he talked about 50 quarter. Yes. Uh, the price of uh, petroleum, we know that he, there was even a formula of trying to remove middlemen and that it was going to reduce. But those are campaign promises. The reality is now when he was elected as president and realizing what is on the table, what he's finding on the table and how he wants to move forward. And that is when we are seeing those, uh, that's when we started see, hearing those pronouncements that you have talked about. For instance, the issue that we are going to pay the actual cost for these uh, products, that we need to deal with the debt. It is true that we had debt. This country was in debt. And the debt was uh, a, a stopping the government from uh, uh, delivering quality services. Even under the previous administration, the last a briefing that pres uh, 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 President uh, Edgar Lungu made to Parliament. He acknowledged that social services are getting a very small amount as compared to the debt that we are servicing. So he needed to deal with debt. IMF came on board and proposed the, uh, uh, measures to say this is how you are going to deal with it. What the President and the administration should have done is that when he was being asked by the Zambian public to say what, is the, what are the conditions for these, uh, uh, the programs that IMF were going on on IMF? They should have gotten the agreement and released it to the public and say, these are the conditions. IMF wants us to increase, uh, uh, to remove subsidies so that fuel, you will pay for this fuel. Uh, in terms of minimum, you, 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 there will be no subsidies. So they should have just laid the, the conditions down that IMF was proposing. And we all know that IMF conditions do not favor the poor. There's an argument there with those conditions. Uh, President Hijila Matoros, him and his team drew those conditions up and presented them to the IMF. So they are Zambian conditionalities so what presented are they? by the IMF. What are they? That is where the issue is, is that even if you drew them up, you should have put them to the public domain so that the public should see to say, these are the conditions which our leaders, our government has drawn up and given IMF. So that Zambians would have appreciated to say these were drawn by ourselves as a government, by, by our leaders in government, and ourselves as a people. But if you, 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 you decided to keep them to yourselves and say, no, we are still negotiating, we cannot release them to the public, that raises a lot of suspicion. But that aside, I am saying it is the reality that debt was crowding out uh, social services. Debt payments were crowding out social services. And that was agreed even in the previous administration. We needed to deal with that. But this is a government that needed to explain to its people and also utilize the local resources that we have. When Zambians were saying, okay, you want to penalize us on these subsidies, why are you giving tax breaks, for instance, to the mines? Okay, Why are you removing certain taxes, you are giving them tax holidays and all that? The money that you want from IMF, the 1.3 billion, you can generate the revenue from the local resources that we have. So people had the solutions to say, these are the solutions that we have. And we can generate the money that we need from the income available here, rather than give the mines tax breaks. That has taken away a lot of our resources. Because now the mines are on a tax holiday. They, they, they don't feel an obligation to contribute efficiently and to the maximum of what they can to the Zambian economy. There are countries like, such as Panama, where the government has insisted that you as a mining a company, you are going to contribute no matter what. It's better you stop mining or mm. you contribute. And we have seen mining companies negotiate with the government and it was a win-win situation. But here it doesn't look like we have a win-win situation. Here the, it's a question of no, we are going to give you time to, to boost your, uh, 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 your, your production and uh, see that you stabilize. But in the meantime, you are trying to make it difficult for the, for the, for the majority of the Zambian people. I, I want to throw something at you, Mr. Mwanza, on this one. Um, issues to do with, with mining. First of all, when the, when the UPND Alliance led administration uh, you know, took over office, um, I remember uh, having a conversation with the mines minister, Honorable Kabuso, who said, uh, we, 
I inherited a mining industry that's in court, which, which is true. There, 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 were, there were some litigation uh, issues going on in there. But also that they had a very, very ambitious, uh, you know, uh, copper output uh, um, target. A very, very ambitious one. Then I got, the argument there was, how do you then attract investment in a, in a country where, first of all, you've got your largest mines in court, not producing, don't you think it was a necessary, necessary evil for them to do to actually get more investors in so that they achieve the intended output of that 10-year plan that they, uh, they want to hit of 3 million metric tons? Yeah, it, it, it is good to see that the copper belt is coming back to life slowly, although uh, when you talk to the people in the copper belt, uh, when you talk about KCM and the rest, they have not felt the impact of KCM coming back for real. But that might be felt in the next uh, maybe one or two years. That's when the Copper Belt will stabilize. Now, the question first is, why did KCM find itself in such a, such a situation? It is because KCM were declaring uh, losses. Even as the, 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 the minerals were going at a very higher price outside there on the, at the London uh, Stock Exchange, you could see that KCM had constantly been declaring losses. Mm. The people on the copper belt were complaining about KCM employing expatriates even for jobs which they themselves could do. So these issues uh, KCM had, even when paying suppliers, local suppliers were not being prioritized by KCM. They were prioritizing the foreign suppliers. So KCM had serious problems. Apart from declaring the Losses all the time. You are mining. You know that you are getting copper, exporting copper. You are mining, but you are declaring losses all the time. So government had to step in. The question is, have we dealt with the KCM to an extent where KCM is going to pay us value? It's going to pay us uh, 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 a, a good, it's going to make good of the taxes that they are supposed to pay. Or we have also given them ta the tax break again so that they will not pay for the next, we don't know how many years. Those are the issues why uh, KCM found itself in those problems. Now, KCM has to demonstrate that they will prioritize local suppliers going forward. They will, they will give people jobs, not expatriates. They will, they will never be declaring losses again, duping the Zambian people that our minerals which we are getting are declaring losses. So it's good to see uh, the, 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 this administration resolve the KCM uh, issue and also the Mopani issue. We need, you know, Copper Belt does not depend on a. Uh, that has not been met. It was just a campaign promise to ensure that the Zambian people can vote for them. Mm -hmm. The issue of the minimum reducing on the minimum. Here we have the Copper Belt energy commodity that uh, 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 was ready to get the fuel from Russia and supply it to the Zambian market. That has never materialized. Mm -hmm. Why has it not materialized? It is because of just this idea. You know, like even our leaders in government, they think when he, uh, uh, there will be private, a private sector here, the private companies deal with private companies in Russia, maybe will be affected as a, as a, as a regime. No, this is the private company to private company and getting low-priced diesel into the market. That would have worked out. So sanctions should not be an issue because those sanctions are not affecting us. They are not affecting many African countries. We see many African countries still getting a fuel from Russia, including our neighbors, Tanzania, here. So when we are talking about the issue of fuel, it is real that we would have gotten fuel from there without endorsing what Russia has been doing in Ukraine. It would not be like we are endorsing what Russia has been doing in Ukraine. Everybody is against what is happening in Ukraine. But when we are going to deal with our people and give them cheaper fuel, why don't you get cheaper fuel from Russia? What are you scared of? Those are the issues that the uh, Minister of Mines, the new minister, of, uh, new minister of Energy must be able to answer to the Zambian people. If there is an offer from the Russian government or the Russian companies to say we can facilitate you to get cheaper fuel, why don't you get it? Because when you get it, it's the Zambian people ultimately that are going to benefit. It is the Zambian economy that is going to benefit. For me, that is the understanding that I have about Russia. Okay. Um, we're still talking about campaign promises three years down the line. 
uh, the UPND did promise to decent. Should do also use the monies to do the roads. You can do the roads. To do a road is not an easy thing. It requires a central government to come in. 35 million, whatever the amount that you can allocate for CDF to do the a road. You can't even do them solo road. That CDF cannot manage to do them solo road in, 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 in Kasenegawa constituents. Here in Lusaka, we have seen that the road network, the, the issue of doing roads has stored. It is because it has been, government has removed a lot of funding from the, uh, from the, 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 the department such as RDA and the, the ministries and given it to, the, to, the, to, to CDF. And you will expect that a, a, a member of parliament is going to budget to do a road even two kilometers in their constituents. It can't happen. The money is not enough to do that. Who come even to the defense of the police instead of coming to the defense of the president? Because generally I expect the, the, the minister to defend the president and say, the police are wrong. If you are going to trample on people's freedoms, you are wrong. We have seen the police not giving, a, a, allowing, not permits, in fact, not allowing the opposition political parties to campaign. In the last three years, there are only about two rallies or so which they sanctioned. But we hear all the time when they've sanctioned in Samfia, now they sanctioned for citizens first, they had to cancel it. Okay? So, the, 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 the space for the uh, opposition political parties is becoming limited. Not because the president has not spoken about giving them rights. He has spoken to say, give them the rights, recognize that they, they have rights to associate but the police are doing things that are so different. So the back now goes back to President Aka in the HLM to say, you, sir, you are the commander-in-chief of all armed forces. The police is also under you. Can you deal with these issues that the Zambian people are complaining about? Where you have issued instructions and the police are doing different things. You know, Zambians get to, to, to conclude. Sometimes Zambians get to conclude to say, no, the fact that the president doesn't get to worry about what is happening uh, with his instructions, with his decrees, it means that he sanctions it. That's a conclusion that Zambians make. To say the fact that no one is bothered by what the police do, it means that the administration sanctions it. It's a negative perception that goes on the administration. We have a lot of people that have been arrested Every now and then they're being arrested. Yes, people must be arrested when they commit offenses. When they commit offenses, people must be arrested. But we have now reduced ourselves to going on social media, trying to find what is this opposition leader saying. You arrest them, charge them with insulting language. You, you, you are literally patronizing the social media just to ensure that you can get these high political figures. Including someone, I think that you, the, the so-called why me, there is a gentleman called why me. He has been rotting in prison in, 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 in southern province. Yeah. These are bondable offenses. Why is the person not being allowed? Why is he not being bonded? So, in terms of the rule of law, I think that there is a lot that this administration must do. If we are failing to enforce all those rights which are under part three, the few political rights, how are we going to enforce the broadened uh, economic and social rights? I don't think that it's a priority. The priority in 2016, up to uh, going forward, was to ensure that we removed the lacunas. But now the courts have pronounced themselves. We now know what, seven day, what, what 14 days is. We now know what must happen when the president is challenged. We now know ministers cannot stay in office. Those issues were contentious, and the courts have adjudicated. They have litigated, people have litigated, and the courts have given clear pronouncements. We know now what happens when a councillor resigns, an independent councillor resigns, whether they can rescind their resignation or not, whether the by election will take, when the by election, because the courts have pronounced themselves, they have clarified the constitution. So when we talk about we need to amend the Constitution, I can assure you, please, the moment we open up this Constitution, we are going to create even more lacunas than the ones we have already dealt with. 
We have dealt with the ones that were there in 2016. Mm. You don't want another 20 years again, 20, 15 years, trying to clean up the, 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 the problems that will arise out of the amendments that we are going to have. So for me, I don't know what, what really people would want, why would they would want these amendments to the, to the Constitution. What is it that is not there? You have the 50% plus, uh, percent plus one. You have the uh, uh, running mate uh, clause. You have the uh, members of parliament. It's not, it's not easy now to remove members of parliament uh, to declare those seats vacant in parliament. And the courts are always pronouncing themselves on this matter. There's a bit of security. The by-elections that we are seeing, we are seeing them because people are resigning. People are dying, which is normal in a democracy. But we are not seeing a situation where, unless you want to say, no, when a person resigns, we must now usher in a clause where the party that held that seat must get the, must actually just put a new one. That is debatable. It might take us another 10 years to debate whether that is a type of an electoral system that we want. Okay. Mr. Mwanza, let's get the people involved at this point. It's 10.04 on your hot station, number one for news and entertainment. In case you're just joining us, we have the Zambian Civil Liberties Union Executive Director, Mr. Isaac Mwanza, joining us on the hot seat this morning. We're looking at, uh, we're reviewing the three years of the UPND government in office. So do give us a call on 974 870 You're listening to the hot seat on Hot FM 87.7. It's time for you to call now and get involved. Call now and get involved. Call us up on 0974-870-877-0950-955-877. Good morning. Good morning. Morning to you. What's your name? Mr. Antele. Mr. Antele, please go ahead with your question or contribution. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Isaac Maza. Uh, good morning, Mr. Antele. Mauka Tiani. Tauka, Mauka. Tauka. Yeah, Mr. Stuani. The Ande, Ande. Yeah, Mr. Stuani. Now. I wanted to find out from you, although we are, we are being about three years, I know there's a lot of things which has gone by, the talk of, of, talk of which are our issue, which are not even cleared. Now, Mr. Mwanza, is it possible that the government can buy land? Because what you know that the government is the owner of the land. But how come to say government has purchased this land? Who is supposed to protect that land? Is it the government or an individual person? Then the issue of JJ, it means that person goes for six months. Do you think these people from Petauk, are they safe? Because they are supposed to consult their member of parliament. As they say, law, what are you supposed to do? Because I understand, after maybe six months, if, the, if it means the, the MP dies, you are supposed to go for election. Look, JJ, Lunga, JJ has been incarcerated, JJ Banda has been incarcerated, and those people, they don't have any opportunity to, to, to have a say over the, the issue they have. Now, as it is, which way forward are we heading? Now, there's another issue of Tele, mining. Mr. Antele. I don't know whether Ms. it has Tele, been now. Mr. Mr. Antele. Hello? Mr. Antele. Mr. Antele, can you hear yes, us? Papa. Yes, we, you've asked two questions. Because of time, I'm going to ask, just allow those two questions you've asked. So that we give chance to Thank others. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 974 870 Because of time... Please, just limit yourself to a question so that Mr. Mwanza gets to tackle a lot of questions that you have uh, and other, you know, uh, callers can actually uh, be able to throw in their questions as well. It's 974 870 Good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning to you. What's your name? Uh, this is Hatem Opson, commonly known as HH. Sorry, your name again? Hatem Opson, commonly known as HH. Hatembo. Opson. All right, please go ahead. Yes, uh, me, I just want to say one thing. I don't know, most of the people that we invite to those programs there, they cry too much about these uh, political figures when they are detained, what everything happens against them when they, they break the law and they are being investigated, they are detained whatsoever. In reality, uh, when those atrocities were happening under UPF, you were all quiet. People were being shot at by police, by cadres, you were quiet. People were getting out of roofs, you were quiet. 
Now you are saying there is no polit there is no democratic space. I don't understand. That's not being honest. Because now it's only now that I'm hearing you to make these checks and balances to the current government. Under UTF, you are never nowhere near to that. So for me, what you are saying there is just hypocritical. I'm sorry to say that, but that is the truth. I think people should be. You should maintain your stance. You shouldn't be biased. You saw what happened during the PF. People died. You were quiet, you guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mwanza. Your response to this. Yeah, question. so um, let me be very clear here. People have an option of what they want to pick and what they don't want to pick. I have said here that this administration of President Haga in the HLM has made progress in some areas. And he has not made progress in certain areas. It is a government that is still going on and on and on. And when you ask me what is the rate I would give to the UPND, I said 5 out of 10. It's actually even a, a much more fair.